joining us, I'm Margot Ortigas, and on this episode of About That, I am once again sitting down with my fellow perennials, Tanya and Carla. Now, we've all spent much of the last 25 years focused on work, either by choice or by default, and it hasn't really left much time for more, uh, shall we say, personal endeavors. Now, do forgive us to those of you out there listening, as this may sound a bit like the blind leading the blind, but in this episode, we perennials from Generation X take on 21st century dating. And what do you do when life doesn't quite work out as you originally expected? Just because I've been talking to quite a few people now, you know, you go out in Manila, and as you mentioned, I have, I have met quite a few people who are in the process of dating. And at this stage where... Like they're our age. Our age. in their 40s, right. um, Galing, not necessarily power. people who have been married before. <laughs> and it seems that Tinder is quite popular in Metro ask, Manila. Are they, really? Are they on Tinder? Net, like yes, Tinder is quite a huge Which, thing. The Philippines, you're but, not really, no one admits that they would be on, except maybe for the people who are cruising. Yeah, but, but aren't we all like one degree away from each other? Don't we all know each other yes, eventually? But apparently, um, you know, the Philippines, the economy booming and all of that, and there's a lot of foreigners oh, who okay. come here who not just make their that home way. here, but fly in and out. Uh, yeah. uh, um, okay, okay. And and yes, so there's a okay. whole new way of meeting people. Okay. But they're not, it's not, because like, my gay friends who, like you said, but even when they yes. travel or if they're in... Oh, no, yeah, not, no. Not, these yeah. are like straight yes. people. Yes, not mm-hmm. necessarily uh, gay or, or anything, you know, or people choosing to have affairs, which right. apparently I've heard some people do. Yeah, that. I've yeah. heard like there are married, married there are yeah. a lot of married men on Tinder. Now that, I'm sure people are might be listening who have stories to tell right. us and that would be a good one to hear. Would love to... Uh, well, not. Because for sure there's quite a few varieties that. that might not have ended very well. Yes. Um, from what I understand, there should be a post-Tinder app, actually. Where you can, like Yelp, you can you can you can rate the guy yeah. or, or oh, whatever, and you can like, kind of them. like yeah, it's like hot or not, but which is I'm dating yeah. myself that hot or not. Well, hot or not is yeah, but does that also have like reviews? Like, it's so basically and so is like this, no, but basically you maybe pay for dinner. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you know? Not in depth. I remember this is so long ago. This is like the early early days of like social media, but. Hot or not was basically like a picture, and you rated if they were hot or ah, not. It's no, very this simple. one is like they should be Yelp. Like a Yelp for like this dating guy apps. Was yeah. Beware. <laughs> Beware. Beware. It's actually, you know, mm-hmm. bad for your I'm sure there bad must, hygiene or there something. There must be a site. There must be one. Mm-hmm. There's got to be one. I mean, there's so many. Would you consider it social media dating? Not What's social you, media no. dating. It's different. That's Never. dating okay. app dating. Oh, sorry. See, I... <laughs> these are social terms, media dating is like... A generation you, Xer, you, you I am hit up aware. someone on Twitter and like, hey, you want to oh, go out on a date? That that is. Because oh, that's so, social media is when you relate to like other people, oh, right? Oh, so ah. app, app dating is more... You go through an app. I see. Like J-Date. Remember like ah, when yeah, J-Date, J-Date, J-Date started out? Okay, J-Date. Talk us through J-Date. Talk about lunch. Oh, I never... Yeah. Did J- didn't yeah. you have that in the UK? JD. I'm not uh, uh, sure. I, I never participated in anything. <laughs> no, I mean, they oh, is that for, for yeah, Jewish? Yeah, so if oh, you're right. Jewish and Ooh. you want to find, yeah. you know, a mate who's Jewish, I think that do they also do gay? They can do gay and, and, and straight, and right? Straight, it's only straight and non non Jewish looking for Jewish. Yeah, or Jewish, Jewish looking, looking for non Jewish. Right. People. But I think it's what eHarmony that didn't have e-harmony gay. He doesn't have gay. I think e- match has. Maybe Matt. Maybe I don't know. I don't go on like, these things. So. Yeah. I mean, I saw it. To be, I, oh, the denials things. are no, flying no, no, fast and furious know. here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, yeah. I don't go on those I things. No, no. Okay. This is, <laughs> this is true story because at the time when I was in the States and it was really like coming up and my and I had friends who were doing it and they said, you should get on it. You should do it. How else are you going to meet people? Especially like my industry was just like... Mm-hmm. You're working so much. You only kind of meet people in this industry. And then, you know, they're like, you should just go and you should do it. The, the absolute truth is I was just lazy. <laughs> right. like, I'd rather E-Harmony stay had like four. No, it was just, the application was so just, long. Yeah. Oh. I was just like, getting on board. Uh, yeah. I'm tired. I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So I never did it. Like, I think I have like a half filled like E-Harmony this application. E-Harmony was uh, a website. Yes. Right? Yes. As opposed to like the apps like, where you can just look at look at profiles as if they're playing but they, cards, they would right? have become yeah. an app ah. eventually but it was like you know it was like match.com it was like early right. pe- where you had to go on the internet it wasn't so much your phone but you had to go on the internet mm-hmm. 
for eHarmony, it was the most involved because you filled out like a bazillion questions oh. and that was supposed to help you find your match. Oh. Which it's still, there's still eHarmony, right? I think right? so. I so, think and so. then their, their ads were always about couples that found each other despite the odds. So, you know, that looked promising, but really that was just the longest questionnaire ever. And I was just mm. like, I think it's like only a third filled. I was like, I can't. I'm mm. sorry. I'm just too lazy. <laughs> and do you, do you, do you still, um, consider yourself out there in the dating world at this point? I mean, are you still actively looking for a partner? I'm not. I'm so, like, not that person no. that would go out to bars and, like, no. I'm kind of a hermit. Yes. <laughs> That's kind yeah. of a bad thing. Yes. Stay at home. No, but Netflix. It's not, but, hello, it's not Netflix, like we never yes. went. But it's not like we we don't go out. Yeah. Because we still go out. We still go out, but not in not to look for a partner right. or yeah. a relationship. Right. No, it's always to just... Either hang out with other people, drink a lot, drink a lot, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so hang basically, you all have drinking problems. At this yes. Point. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've developed. It. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, you. It's not a problem if you no, can hold it. I can hold it. <laughs> she, she's I'm fine. I'm pretty good at her. Um, but no, I never. No, I'm not. Never say never, but I'm not actively looking for something. Yeah, I don't know. I've just kind of like given up classifying it. You can't. Con- it's the thing I can't control. Right. So it comes, it goes. Mm-hmm. I don't have any. For someone who likes control, this is the one thing I've learned no. that I'm not. I'm not gonna focus on it because that's not something I can control. Mm-hmm. How did you make peace? Asking for all the other control freaks out there, how did you make peace with the things that you cannot control? Um, it's a process, but I. I mean, I'm, there's still things that I want to control. Like, I control freak or not, I think all of us kind of. Well, we probably all wish, I'm not sure, but we probably all wish that we could control things so that with the outcome is something that we want, that it's in our favor. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know that there's an answer. I think either it's not so much giving up as it is like coming to terms with like, okay, I understand now that this is something I don't have control over, which is certain parts of mm-hmm. your life. But then there are others. But then I think though, the funny thing is the parts I can't control, I'm like, full on, I'm controlling you it. because you're the only thing I can control. <laughs> so maybe that's the reaction. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure other people have better answers than that. You can tell me how to... Carla is shaking her head and staring off no, into space right no, now. My, going... my... Mine is more... Because it's more practical, I guess. Right. Because I lived away. My Mine is more like systems and... Um, process, go- government, you know, like banking and government. Oh, that and stuff that, that you can't kind. control. Right? Yeah, so that kind. It's more about the traffic. Um, it's not about like people who don't know how to cook or people who don't know how to order things in restaurants. It's all about practical things. So how my life is affected now. Like my banking, I don't trust the banks here. The, you know, like it's it's all like that. So it's like it's beyond my control. It's a bigger systemic thing. So and it's probably something people can't figure out themselves for years and years and years. So I'm just like, whatever. So I'm not going to spend my time worrying about it. I will complain about it, right? But I'm not going to actively seek solution. I guess so. I just give yeah. up on it. The other thing I find helpful for me. You know, especially if you're frustrated, is to kind of just get out of myself. Like, just because right. it's, it's so, if it's just okay, all about what I can control, what I can't, it's just so like myopic, it's so small. So, having to worry about other people is better. Right. Yeah. Because then you can take a break from like figuring out, because your own life gets boring. Yes. For yes. a while. Mm-hmm. So, figuring out, if, especially nowadays when a lot of people need help, you know, whether it's in a small way I can help out, whether it's like, a conflict area or if it's you know someone who needs like a ride somewhere like big small ways that you can just kind of make someone else's life better right that yeah. helps me because then it's like a vacation from the stuff that i can't control right and then you're just like okay it's not so bad there's one chip yes. that i was able to like help out and then yeah i can come back to like figure out the rest of what i need to do today right. and there's lists i don't do you have like a lot of lists every day in terms of what you need to do I didn't used to because I oh it it yeah I, I I couldn't have lists because since I was working in news, which is a very odd industry to begin with, um, nothing was ever fixed. 
I might think I would have time to have dinner somewhere with some people and then by three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm on a plane to somewhere else entirely, right. not knowing how long I was going to be away for. So I think that um, made it very easy for me to learn to not have control and be okay with uh, it. Okay. You know, because uh, I, I couldn't. Right. There was nothing I couldn't control other than my deadline, for example, is 8 p.m. I better be ready with a story by 8 p.m. Right. That, you know, I can I I can say that I always managed to do. Yeah. But then at that Thankfully. point, you're just in work. You're in that yes. work bubble. But the thing, I learned what I, what I learned to do, I think, through all of that, that you know, it's like, because there was always so much chaos, like like we're hearing now, right? <laughs> because there was always the so much external chaos, you had to learn to just control yourself because that's all you could do, right? And as long as you were okay with that, like if you were centered in whatever it was and you found your own bit of peace, then you were okay to handle anything else. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. So I always found like it, I was, it was always when things were most chaotic outside of me that I was more able to be steady mm. that's, wow. that's that's yeah because for me it's more the in my line of work it's very much we're more creatures of habit so we're, we go by schedules it's very scheduled it's and very it's repetitive regimented. right very, very repetitive because you have the right. same your consistency for consistency you is key is key yeah. right so i have to do it the exact same way thousands of times a day every single day so um when it comes when when there are days when it's off it's one in a million it's very rare but the one in a million days it's it takes every single bit of my being to make sure that damage control it's the only thing i can do is damage control that's there's nothing else i can do this in a restaurant you start bad you will end bad that's how right. it really is right so um you just wait for the day to end so that it's reset for tomorrow right um but um always a creature of habit now that i don't have a restaurant to run with the regiment that i do i get entirely confused what day of the week it is what time of the day it is i don't know what i'm doing the next minute and that for me is kind of my loss of control that freaks me out but um i've learned to just kind of well it's been six months since yeah six months since i last worked in a regimented thing so now i've just learned to just kind of let it go and it's it, it took a lot for me, but now I have to focus on bu- on trying to find a way to build a restaurant. So I'm looking long term rather than tomorrow, right. the right. next day. Yeah. Right. When it used to be, my every day was what's for tomorrow, what's for tomorrow, what's for tomorrow. Now it's what's mm. in six months. Well, when you flash forward, when you're starting your, which you kind of are, yeah. starting your own business, <coughs> you're gonna have lists every day. Yeah. Welcome to my world. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I'm not a list. I don't make lists. Right. I just kind of like go off the top of my head. Not really that kind of person. I think we're out of GNPs. We need to refill. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Now that's a perfect moment to take a break. The conversation took a few unexpected turns, but isn't the unexpected what adds magic to life? Now, what do you guys think? And how do you handle things not quite panning out as you might have planned? What's gotten you through the unexpected? Are you where you thought you'd be at this point in your life? Please do drop us a line. We'd love to hear more about that. I'm Marga Ortigas, thanking you for joining us. And catch us again soon.